Hello, YouTube. Well, we got a very special uh, edition of Locked Out in store for you guys. Um, when I originally began this particular project, I intended to, you know, just make all this into into one show and and show you how it all works and and what we're doing with it. But then I discovered that there's so much left out by virtually every other person on YouTube and anywhere else uh, who details uh, tubular locks, which is what we're going to be dealing with today uh, over the next several segments. Um, I decided that the best way to handle the, uh, the volume of information here is to just break it up into, into five different parts. Uh, Part one is this part, this is the intro, and this is where I'm going to introduce you to these things here and just tell you a little bit about them and, and very lightly dust over exactly what we're doing this for and why and what it covers. Uh, the next segment is going to detail just this pick, the Huck pick, um, because I think this pick and other picks like it really are, are deserving of some detail. Um, and then we're going to tackle the Southern pick, and we're going to do it in the same way. And then we're going to go over a, a, a little hidden surprise that I've, I've got for you. Uh, of course, if you, <laughs> you know, if you just look down in the, in the channels or, or whatever up here, uh, the other videos, of course, you can just skip right through to the end if that's what you want to do. But I really recommend that you, uh, you stay tuned if you want to learn something, maybe, because, you know, if you want to see some of this stuff and what it's what it's about without actually having to go to the expense of acquiring these, um, and not to mention having to get around whatever else you might have to get around, anything from the law to in your particular jurisdiction to, you know, just your parents or something, whatever it happens to be, that you want to, uh, uh, you know, study these or learn about them, but you don't, for whatever reason, you can't really get a hold of the actual stuff, but you want to, you've got questions about it that you want answered, and none of the other videos have answered them. So I'm, I'm with you on that, and I totally understand. So let's, without further dudes, uh, let's go ahead and, and get started here. <clears throat> I first got interested in uh, tubular lock picking uh, because I actually own a few things that have tubular locks on them, but I can't get into them because the people from whom I got them uh, didn't have the keys anymore, or the keys were broken or otherwise unavailable, and that really, you know, that really diminished the value of what I purchased. But it also, uh, well, it was also a really great thing for me because I got the stuff pretty cheap, and it, it turns out I saved uh, quite a bit uh, just from what I learned. But uh, anyway, so I, I went across the web, and I started looking for, you know, pictures, video, websites, anything, anything, really anything I could find that would, that would show me anything uh, about this stuff, give me a place to start. So I just went around and... Uh, Oh, I see. I just went around and got what images I could find of various picks. The way that they're done, and, oh, and the locks, of, of course. The way that the locks are constructed, uh, the way that the picks are constructed, and I'll, I'll give you some close-ups of some of this stuff. I'm just going through it to show you generally what I was hunting for, what I was looking for. I want to show you what my process was. Um, let me go ahead and change the focus because I'm going to show you a little bit better detail of some of these pictures. Um, yeah, I, I realized that if I if I really, really wanted to, I could go out of my way to make this really cool with the digital stuff and whatnot, but I really don't want to. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> this is what you're just going to have to deal with. All these pictures are available on Google. And Google tubular lock pick and, and look at the image section and, and all these pictures will come up. Anyway, uh, this is just a blown apart image of 
a key with its lock. Uh, I believe this is an ESD lock. Uh, one of those cheap ones that you find uh, in a lot of laundromats that secure um, the top maintenance boxes for the uh, uh, the levers for the coin. You're right behind the coin receiver, right behind the coin box. Uh, on the top, there will usually be one of these locks, um, and they're uh, they're pretty bitch made. Uh, anyway, and I was having as my goal just figuring out you know not only how these locks work but how the picks work how the keys work and I was looking for all these kind of images that I could find and I was noticing every little thing about them you know I, I, it didn't escape me that some of them have these little notches here all the way around some of them just have a notch here in one little spot uh, uh, and I was looking at the keys too you know I was I was paying attention to these notches on the outside and, and all the, how all this stuff would, here's one and there's another. And so I already had a pretty good idea of how these locks and how these keys went together and how all this stuff was going to have to work in order to even pick one. Because there's lots of blown apart images and stuff like that. Uh, and then I started trying to get close up images. Really, really good close up images of exactly you know how all this stuff was shaped and and measurements were really good too uh, any any pictures that showed measurements of the device you know just overlaid like this one was really great for me uh, there's another one that shows the actual diameter of the picking tube you know like this right here shows me that this is 7.5 millimeters wide and and you know this is a this is a huck pick I've got one of these uh, right here actually I've got three of these right here and I'll I'll get into the huck picks later but right now I'm just going over a little bit of my process so I I, I wanted to build my own pick because I like building my own my own tools when it comes to this kind of stuff I wanted to build my own pick because I just prefer to build my own tools when it comes to crap like this. So I started with this. Uh, well, actually, that's not really true. What I what I really started with was this, which is my Ace-2 lock. And the fact that this is an Ace-2 lock is actually very important. And we'll get into exactly why it's very important later. But... Uh, and some of you, of course, you already know why it's very important. But I'm just going to give you a little close-up here. There we go. It's an Ace-2. This is from, uh, I figured, the 90s. But, uh, you know, they weren't, they weren't making them quite as well as this one is made back then. And, of course, uh... Let me go ahead and get it up one more time here for the key. So, you know, and I've cleaned this key up a little bit, but it's still, you can tell it's pretty, it's pretty beaten up. There's some splits in it. Um, splits, of course, are not good because it means that the key is breaking. But this is about a 30-year-old key, so... You know, I mean, it's it has actually lasted for a lot longer than I would expect a regular pin tumbler lock to last. Um, anyway, so this is what I'm I'm starting with this this lock here, and of course I'm sure you'll notice on this key the little top notch is gone because I filed it off, and uh, we'll get into uh, exactly why I did that a little bit later. But most of you probably already know especially since this is an ACE-2 lock. Some of you probably already know exactly why this nib is cut off. Just because you can see this this huck pick here. And you see that I had to deal with this thing. And you know exactly why this is cut off. But anyway, and we're going to put this thing right over here. So I had those pictures that you saw and this lock and this thing to look at. So I went around through my toolboxes and stuff. I've got a, really a whole lot, whole lot of tools. 
and uh, I went around through my toolboxes looking for really anything at all in my toolboxes that would double for this and I found something that was really kind of pretty close I mean it's pretty much exactly uh, the only problem is there's no depressions cut out so when I try to put this in here it, it wants to go in but the pins being in the way and the, the thickness of this uh, in cross-section and the fact that it's got this stuff on the inside that gives it this angling here all means that it's not actually going to work for this um, <clears throat> but that didn't stop me from getting you know the bobby pins and stuff and trying to get it to where I could do this and then maybe hold it this far out and then shove these pins in and use them to sort of like single pin pick each one of these and that's just entirely ludicrous and, and we'll go into much greater detail later on exactly why that's ludicrous but it's ludicrous it'll never work <laughs> even if it works it shouldn't work <laughs> even true things once once said on Fox News become lies that whole thing anyway let me get my focus back I need a focus puller guys if anybody wants to volunteer to be a focus puller because autofocus sucks and I don't use it. Uh, anyway, um, so that's the homemade pick that I that I try to do, and of course it's just bobby pins and a hair tie on this little Thorson tool. I mean, you pick this. This is I'm holding probably about three dollars worth of crap in my hand right now. This is nothing. Um, it's nothing for a lot of for a lot of reasons. I mean based on the pictures and stuff and, and just this lock over here it's not too bad an effort especially since I invested all of about 15 minutes doing this it's not a bad effort but <clears throat> when you look at this or even these um, these right here ended up teaching me quite a bit and we'll get into those in, in a real good detail but uh, this set that I got through Alibaba. Um, this set here actually comes with all the tools and spare parts and all the other stuff you could ever possibly want. And I got this for uh, a little under 40 bucks, including the shipping. The biggest pain in the ass with this was that it took a month to get here. And I'm the I am in the geographic center of these United States. So uh, uh, coming in from uh, the Japan, Jap not Japan, China, the the China, um, what I guess you'd call them the the boonies, northern China, uh, was where this came from. Uh, so it's nowhere near the the ocean or anything like that. So it had to go over land a ways, um, in order just to get to the to the ships and and across to whatever not or maybe to the airport. What however it got here. Anyway, the next one is this Southern. Now, I ended up getting this Southern because I noticed a fatal flaw with the Huck Pick. And the fatal flaw on the Huck Pick is what the Southern makes up for just by the way that it's made. Um, I'll give you a little bit of a spoiler right now. The, uh, the main problem with these Huck Picks is this right here it's the uh, it's the little well I'm gonna call them silicon gasket rubber bands because that's pretty much what they are they're essentially rubber bands that are providing the tension here um, instead of this thing right here which actually clamps down and and gives not individual tension but but certainly a much higher degree of tension than a rubber band wrapped around and, and we'll get into exactly all the physics of that you know later but like I said, this is just an introductory to show you, you know, what we'll be looking at, what I'll be dealing with, what I'll be uh, covering, and uh, a surprise towards the end about um, both of these and some steps that I took in order to uh, make them usable <laughs> for my intended purpose. Uh, anyway, that's 
that's it for the intro I wanted to show you this thing and give you any stuff like that but I didn't want to make you watch this unless you wanted to so uh, stay tuned for uh, part two where we'll be covering the uh, Huck pick by itself